Angels, one of the better cards against Demir Inverter. Choked Estuary versus Plains to start. Second land for Kruger's Fabled Passage. Kruger is no slouch either. X-Whale on Magic Online. Big grinder frequently at the top of the modern trophy leaderboard. Kind of just picked the deck up this morning. And, you know, I know I've said this a lot today, but really is making it look easy to do well. Yeah, I mean, he's 7-0. He's already qualified for the second day. You see him Fatal Push and Anna Fenza there. Anna Fenza is kind of quietly a really powerful card in the Mono White Devotion, the Heliod combo archetype, because it lets you just play a Ballista for two mana and have it be a 2-2, two -two, which means it only takes four mana to fully Heliod Ballista combo. Right, and there are even a lot of fair games where that card just goes off with Walking Ballista because you can constantly adjust Walking Ballista and only have one toughness. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's just kind of a glorious anthem, you know? Right. Good, honest, beat-down creature. Kruger just making land drops. Heliod deployed on turn three for Purdue. So now Kruger is going to be kind of on edge the rest of the game. Right. So this is the spot where Purdue would need one of the special lands to actually win with a walking ballista from here. But unless Kruger makes some real headway, Purdue's going to be able to threaten it pretty consistently from here on out. Kruger made land number four and drowned Catacomb. Purdue is going to cast a couple creatures. It's a backup Anafenza, a fourth land, and then that's going to be Daxos, blessed by the sun. And now this is the combo with Heliod. Now whenever anything dies or enters the battlefield, we'll see Heliod start to distribute counters on things. Daxos also has that effect where you can on two mana with the Helia, just kind of fully combo. Right. So Kruger's got to watch that. He pushes the Daxos, leaves behind that 3-3 Anafenza. And this all stopped the Helia from attacking in middle combat. It lost the Devotion Threshold there. Very relevant to check your opponent's pips. Kruger makes land number five in his turn and passes. And Gideon allies Enigar. That That's a nice source of pips. Oh, yeah. Purdue is very interested in moving to combat. <laughs> yes, indeed. Imagine Gideon's making an ally this turn. But it's also making Helio a creature for now. It's also a knight of autumn in this case. <laughs> Heliod and Anafenza are going to rumble, and this time they will connect. Kruger's going to fall to 12. Knight token deployed by Gideon, and this time Kruger's going to dig through time. He's got to try to find a win kind of quickly here. It's really difficult. You can't really do much about Heliod. Right. This is one where you generally have to answer the cards around Heliod. Funny thing about them being indestructible. Right. Indestructible enchantment against blue black. <laughs> I've never destroyed what are you an enchantment. Gonna do? I've never destroyed an enchantment in my life. <laughs> Kruger's taking a look at these dig cards. You see an opt, you see a thought seize. Jace Wielder of Mystery plus Opt is going to hand. Damage has been done on the Thought Seize front, so passes on that. We'll see what he can do on his turn. The Jace is tough because he, he can't really just keep Jace for a turn, not against this kind of pressure. So he's going to start by opting. It feels like Kruger's really just looking for the namesake card this turn. The Inverter. Thassa's Oracle. It's going to be the second step here. Looks at the top two. Sees an opt and a mystical dispute. Going to keep the opt. Plays Drown Catacomb and passes. Purdue can make a really big swing here, e even without plussing the Gideon. He's already attacking with a 5-5, five, five, a 3-3, three, three, and a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I, I mean, presenting lethal this turn is trivial. Looks like there's a Benelish Marshal hiding out in Purdue's hand as well. Deck plays two main deck baffling ends and two stasis snares. If he had that sort of thing, that might make this easy. Is that Knight of the White Orchid? Oh, yeah. Ooh, that gets idyllic range. 
Ooh. That's what we call a pup spell. Now go find your planes, put it in on tap, put a plus one, plus one counter on one of these creatures. Also, Anna Fenza going to trigger. Couple pump spells rolled up in this night. So the Anna Fenza trigger is going to grow the night token to a three. Idyllic range is drummed up by the knight of the white orchid. Suppose there's a few knights at this point. Multiple knights. What are what are what's the multiple knights called? Like knights in um, a school of knights. They sit Ooh, at a, a round table. I was going to say they sit at a round table, so I think it's just a circle of knights. A table of knights. <laughs> <laughs> a desk of knights. What's got four legs and 13 knights? <laughs> a round. <laughs> 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 and that knight token is going to grow all the way to a four off the grange. And here's a second Gideon. It's knight tribal. It's Gideon tribal. All kinds of tribes showing up in this mono white deck. Gideon of the trials. It's going to be really hard for Kruger to win through all of this because now Purdue has the ability to just make a Gideon of the Trials emblem and Kruger has to answer two Gideons before he can even think of comboing. Yeah, I don't think he can beat the battlefield as Gideon now as Enikar is going to plus and Purdue is going to make this lethal swing that forces a chump block. And I don't think Kruger can beat the emblem. The emblem has showed up. We see Kruger milling Purdue before conceding for information. Yeah, what else you have in that mono planes deck? All right, I'll pack them up. Jameson Purdue up a game, and that I think that's one of the strengths of this deck. The, the combo is of course great; it wins the game on its own just with two cards. But when you can consistently make Heliod a creature, three mana five five is nothing to mess around with. Yeah, that was certainly a point where we saw Kruger with what, two, three removal spells that game, got to resolve a dig through time, and it just was not enough. It, that game did not look close. Players go into Cyborg. Purdue has three Damping Sphere, three Rest in Peace, two Glaracies, two Baffling Ends, two Stasis Snare, two Elspeth Conquers Death, and a Gideon Ally of Zendikar. So I want to focus on a question of, did you just say Glaracy? I did. I've been waiting for this moment, actually. I talk about right, this card sometime. So long. <laughs> How long? Well, I could feel it in the air last night. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so things I would expect to come in here. Uh, Rest in Peace is actually a card that is good against the Inverter deck because it hurts a lot of its kind of fair game plan that the deck wants to be able to play in order to combat all of the Planeswalkers and, and the fact that Mono White is presenting its own infinite combo and just kind of makes those worse. Uh, I think we could also expect to possibly see Stasis Snare and or Gideon allies in the car coming in. All right, for Will Kruger, who is going to need some help here, he has three Damping Spheres, two Ashiok Nightmare, Nightmare Weaver, two Mystical Dispute, two Jace Friends Prodigy, two Legion's End, a Cry of the Carnarium, a Negate, a Noxious Grasp, and a Thassa's Oracle. So at this point, Kruger basically needs to decide if He's actually trying to play the game with Mono White Devotion or if Kruger thinks that he needs to beat Purdue by comboing better. I would expect to see Thassa's Oracle come in regardless because one of the ways that you actually just beat them heads up is having, say, Inverter with a Rest in Peace on the battlefield into Thassa's Oracle in the same turn cycle in order to not just die. Um, Legion's End obviously good against the pile of double pip white bears that the deck is presenting. You can make a case for Cry of the Canarium. I'm not super excited about it because both everything except really Knight of the White Orchid is kind of insulated from it. It's mostly doing the exact same thing as your other spot removal spells, but right. it's a sorcery and it costs three. Yeah, and unless you're expect trying to tag things like Thraben Inspector. So to the you're really not that worried about it. To the net, to the dynamic you posted earlier, Will has to really decide that he's playing the game. Like he's playing the attrition game. He's going to reach for that one. Exactly. But the big one here, Noxious Grasp, big card to be able to actually attack white planeswalkers. A new product was announced uh, earlier in the week. These are the new Challenger decks, and they have some nice spells in them. There's a set of four there. We have pre-orders up over on StarCityGames.com slash Q03. 
For premium members, you get all four decks for eighty-five forty-nine. And if you're not subscribed, what are you even doing? It's actually kind of an unreal deal either way, right? Obviously, I'm going to recommend the premium member price because it basically pays for itself at that level. Yeah, it's eight bucks to subscribe. Your discount's five percent off. Five percent off and of ninety bucks. You're getting pretty close. You buy one other thing. You read one article. For example, you read Jerry Thompson this week about how to innovate on Sultai Delirium. You get ahead of the pace of Pioneer that way. Maybe you read from world champion Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa. Ever heard of him? No. You have. Okay. Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. We are underway for game number two. Kruger is going to shock for Watergrave and kind of shock again for Thoughtsy. He's going to end up at 16 after taking a look at a hand of uh, what's this? Augury Owl. Is that the card? Arcanist Owl. Augury Owl is a different card. Oh, yeah. That's the scry one. I like that one. Big fan of that one. Arcanist Owl, Benelish Marshall, Knight of the White, Or White Orchid, three planes, and a Nyxos. So this is kind of the thing that happens with a lot of the Devotion decks where... You know, all of these cards are legal, and <laughs> that cannot be denied. That's just a fact. They're both legal and in the hand. But it feels like this is just an incredible standard deck trying to hang in the Pioneer format. So uh, I played well, – the deck I was playing was bad, but I was playing some Pioneer, and I uh, played against this Helia Devotion combo deck, and I waffled a little bit on how good I think Thoughtseize into the matchup. So there's, there's some questions here. Helia is a card that you kind of have to thought seize, but it's also a card that's kind of bad in multiples. So I, I kind of waffle on whether you want to trim on thought seize in the matchup. And like you mentioned, he's looking at a hand of legal cards. Right. So I think a lot of the time the good cards are so much better than the bad cards that thought seize actually has a ton of value if you're able to take, say, a Gideon of the Trials or something to that effect. So I'm not super excited about cutting any of them, but it's very rarely a card I'm excited to draw several copies of. Sure. The turn 1-1 one, one, usually pretty effective. Right. It takes Benelis Marshall. Purdue just plays a Plains. Kruger on 2. Has a Thought Erasure to follow up. A land was picked up. Looks like an idyllic Grange, and this time the Arcanist Owl goes down. That one's a pretty nice one to take with these discard facts, just because it's worth two cards if the game's Sometimes. about the battlefield. Right, yeah, yeah. If you were lucky enough to I don't hit. know if you've played with Arcanist Owl much. That card's like 1.4 cards. That's rough. It's rough to be on the wrong side of half of a card. <laughs> Knight of the White Orchid finding no land, speaking of half of a card, and Kruger's going to take his turn and opt a card to the bottom. At this point, I would assume the other card that Purdue drew for turn was another copy of Knight of the White Orchid. Ipnu Rivulet and a pass. Knight attacks, Kruger to 14. There's some argument to just be aggressive. Kruger already did four damage to himself. Sure. Plans number three and a pass. Right, and if you're not ramping into anything, there isn't actually that much value to be gained in putting in additional planes on the battlefield. Knight gets pushed. Here's Ashiok Nightmare Weaver for Kruger. Going to plus that one. So this card's actually quite nice in the matchup because of how many cheap, efficient two drops that Purdue has put in his deck. Ashiok ends up being able to protect itself very frequently. And in a game like this, you might just see Ashiok milling Purdue be how the game ends. Yep. It exiles some lands in a walking Blista on Purdue's turn. He's going to play Nykthos and a Blista on two. Which is pretty good at pressuring Ashiok. We'll find out if Kruger has anything to say about that. As Kruger starts his turn, plusing Ashiok again. Finds Heliod. Kind of funny, he has both halves of the combo, but he can't really do any of that. <laughs> oh, but what if he hits a, ben a Benelish Marshall? Ooh, yeah. Because yeah. then you put it with the Ballista, you can actually cast it. Right, for Make zero. it a 1-1. One, one. Yeah, no, I mean, we're talking 10, 20 turns off. The question is, is there a way for Kruger to make white mana? And I don't think that he can. Because you still need to activate the Heliod. Well, you know, what if you put a Knight of the White Orchid in play as well? Can you Does search Purdue's deck? Can you <laughs> <laughs> is that legal? Idyllic Grange for uh, Purdue is going to grow the Blissa to a three. Kruger's land that turn was just a tap fed a pool, so no spells, just an Ashiok activation. This is a very scary Ballista. And Purdue says, I'm going to ignore your Ashiok. Your life total is kind of low. Here comes three. What do you have to say about it? Upstairs. Kruger to 11 and is going to use a dig through time. 
couple of lands in there, but also some combo pieces. I think that, that is the entire selection, lands and combo pieces here. Love combo pieces. <laughs> Less big on lands. I've seen Don't you talk to me I, about lands. I get the idea that you like drawing a lot of lands. No. I see you do it just all the time. Yeah, well, you know. <sighs> Ashiok goes to nine. Another ballista. Benelish mm. Marshall. It's happening. <laughs> He's got the Marshall, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That Elspeth Conquers Death. I suppose that's a card you can find with Argus. Uh, like, these plays are legal. That is exiled. Yeah, well, yes. I understand. <laughs> I'm just verifying it's in the deck list. Right. And here's Inverter of Truth. All right. One card. One dig through time. Oh, my God. <laughs> Heliod. <laughs> Fifth land. Here's Heliod. Target my Walking Ballista. I would like to demonstrate a loop. And Jameson Purdue, and he, yeah, sure, yeah, I got a combo, I whatever. Mean, that's the point. That's